They're afraid, of course, we just came off cash in the end. They're looking very good. They took out Absolute Legends two games to nothing. Uh, Q-Squad got a forfeit win over OTP. Seems like Q-Squad gets a lot of forfeit wins, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what the reason is there, but yeah, it just kind of happens to be coincidence. But uh, um, Pikachu did beat Team Mistral as well earlier on today, so Pikachu going to be moving on. And they play the winner of the Pencils TT Esports Series, which we were actually watching a little bit ourselves there. Uh, Pencils is currently up one game to nothing, and they are in game number two right now, I believe. So, Right, right. There you go. Kind of a rundown of the other matches going on. But again, the big one we're focusing on, Stay Green versus Complexity. It looks like both of the teams are ready to go. And we are actually now loading in as long as everything goes fine. It looks like it did. Emperor, are you ready? Let's do this, Breaky. Let's do it. We got game number one. Complexity taking on Stay Green. Diamond Division winner's bracket semifinals. Let's take a look. All right. Stay Green Legion side. Complexity Hellborn side, of course. And the blind bands. There you go. Stay Green. They love to blind band them, them some Moon Queen. Uh, we see that pretty much every time lately uh, against uh, most teams. Moon Queen Wild Soul, though. And then Deadwood Ophelia coming out from Complexity. So don't want to have to deal with the Deadwood here on uh, Stay Green's side. Yeah, uh, the other hero that comes to mind is obviously there is still the Rally, uh, still the Pebbles, which they like to run. Uh, maybe we'll see one of those heroes get locked or, you know, both the Fade plus Pebbles. I mean, Fade, okay, Fade's are other signature hero as well. It's interesting to see. Uh, Complexity always went the route of banning Fade or other teams banning Fade against SG, and now interesting to see that that, that Fade ban has been replaced by Deadwood ban. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Deadwood showing to have just that much of an impact on the scene, so. You know, I, I will say, too, some, some insight here is uh, I have, of course, I still talk to Tralfamador, obviously, and he actually did bring up how if, if they were to run into State Green, which it was setting up if they happened to win their first round matchup, but anyways, if they were to play State Green, they were 100% going to blind ban Deadwood. Uh, so yeah. clearly there's some lot that you know there's some thinking there amongst many uh, many players. Well, you got to see Stray Green's win rate with win rate with Deadwood, and that's like seems to be their comfort go-to hero. And Spindle Melons, in, in my opinion, that's his best hero as well. Mm -hmm. So never a bad thing to to ban those you know sorts of heroes out. Uh, they did ban out Wild Soul. They seem they they run Wild Soul just fine, but they seem to be favoring more you know mid game oriented mid game heavy lineups where they just try to you group up push yeah. take it out but still have you know heroes that can taper into the late game but just very mid game dominant heroes in general um <clears throat> yeah other than that not too much else crazy we see the good old uh you know keeper versus tempest battle going on we see uh hmm. yeah, a couple more well, soul reaper final lock there so a little bit different um, TT Esports definitely runs a, a bit of Soul Reaper we've seen from time to time, and, and Stay well, Green has as well themselves, so. Yeah, and Slicks is the guy that used to run Soul Reaper a lot, too, yeah. so. Uh, but, you know, here we actually saw, we saw B-Kid locking it, um, mm -hmm. interesting. I think, actually, Soul Reaper could be a pretty good hero against Stay Green in some situations, and obviously, if they do run a Keeper Suicide, yeah. uh, a hero like Soul Reaper is just, uh, very dominant, I should say, so. Yeah, yeah, he, in that matchup we've talked about in the past, and we've seen a couple times before, it's. It is powerful. Pebbles, though, going to be the first pick. I'll tell you, that banning phase, man, and that thing went quick. <laughs> Tundra, Fade, Zephyr, Engineer, Draconis, Parasite, and seemed like uh, literally like 10 seconds later, six bands come out, and we're into the picking stage. So yeah. uh, Pebbles, though, the first pick from State Green. Now, obviously, on complexity side uh, to see how they respond over here. Yeah, um, Silhouette obviously still in the pool and, uh, you know, a favorite of Hacks are in, so mm -hmm. that is very much still an option. Other than that, uh, they, they run Rally. I've seen Rally run occasionally. I've even seen B-Kid, you know, played a bit. So that's always an option. It's still in the pool. Uh, there is no Pebbles. There is no Fade anymore. There's no Deadwood draftable if they're looking for, you know, strong. Yeah, and, and Magnus is in the lock pool, and he's the only one. So they, 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 they could go with something like a Rally, honestly. There's also yeah. a Hammerstorm available. So. Yeah, I'm thinking something like a Rally, Rally Luna here. And I think the first yeah. time they played it, that was our first game where they actually, again, kind of a similar situation. Deadwood was taken out, and they picked up Rally themselves. And, you know, that yes. kind of left State Green, and, and they weren't able to get one of those two. And obviously that goes back to that 15-minute concede victory for complexity. So Was it Moon Meander that played Rally that game? It was, yes. I, yeah, it was, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, so Rally is definitely an option here that I've been looking at. I'm looking at them and probably pick up the other support. <laughs> There's the Aluna. We could sort of see that one coming in. Mm -hmm. Will it be Rally or not? Uh, thinking, Bubbles man. is still in the pool too. Um, just, just an option. But yeah, still what? Okay, we did, we did go over that. Still being there. And yeah, sure enough. Yeah, so clearly it's just a case of uh, that was on the mind. You know, maybe it was between Silhouette and maybe that Rally. But uh, right. I mean, there is. Well, go ahead. Well, I think one of the great things about it is they, they deny SG that free uh, Silhouette pickup on top of the Pebbles having two top tier tar heroes of each of their classes mm -hmm. uh, by picking it up there. And there's still other options. If they don't go Rally, there's Hammer. Uh, they might be looking for a Magmus. They'll go for a Rally right there. So. Yeah, it just works out in the end anyway. So. 
Um, but, yeah, the Master of Arms and M4, a follow-up there from State Green. Again, aggressive play written all over it, especially with that M4, the global presence from Master of Arms. And, of course, Slick's playing that as carry potential. He's showing time and time again lately that he can absolutely do that. Keeper the four, snap pick. Tempest, Wretched Ag, a very quick response from Complexity. So uh, these two teams, for the most part, uh, had, had a good idea of what they were going for. Yeah, uh, I think I the, the thing that signified the... The keeper pick out of the lock pool for there was the master. Uh, Swindle Mullins has been on the stream before. He did say, "Hey, uh, we really like we like we like keeper, but you know sometimes they don't always like to draft him. Whenever you see master arms for them, you usually see the keeper as well. They love the lockdown. They love the negative armor on top of the root and how long their forces sit inside that acid bomb. So yeah. uh, something like that just you can sort of see that one coming. Now I will say two things that stand out to me. One is that Magmus again. SG has been doing this a lot lately, too. They've been running a Suicide Magnus, actually. And once again, I assume that Keizu is going to be doing that here uh, for uh, for staking with the lane setups. You know, and that allows you to, of course, run the Jungle Keeper, your Suicide Magnus, uh, and, uh, you know, go on from there. Something like, you know, Master of Arms probably short, and then Pebbles and inform mid, perhaps. But Right. Um, now, again, that does mean you're going to put Keeper of the Force in your jungle. You've stressed you, you, you prefer to see him in that Suicide is that is well, it a big deal here? It, it really depends on whether or not they're going with like a really aggressive lane strategy, an aggressive jungler versus your passive jungler. It depends on a lot of factors. Yeah. Uh, here, I think they have pretty sound lanes. I like how they have it set up. Uh, if they do wind up throwing Master in that short with, given his extra regen and how he's built, I, I could definitely see that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they got to be careful. And in the end, they're going to throw Pebbles wherever he feels like he can get the, the quickest PK. So, because Master, as we've as we've seen, even when uh, Slicks has been held down early game with Master, the momentum created from Pebbles, and you know, even Magnus, as long as he gets his levels up, even without the uh, the farm, uh, still a lot of great synergy with his team. So, yeah. Yeah, of course, and actually is going to go up here. Is uh, He does have his team support, almost as if he's trying to bait them out to uh, initiate on him, but obviously seeing the minimap, probably not going to happen. And yeah. They will be able to get their water sites down fairly easily right here. So, mm -hmm. uh, Another thing I'm noticing, too, is who's playing what heroes is kind of standing out to me a little bit. Riser playing the Suicide Hag here, whereas Moomian are actually going to be playing the Tempest. So, um, and, and I actually was thinking about that, too, how we're n we don't usually see Complexity run a Suicide Hag, honestly. You know, we're so used to that with maybe, like, TDM, but Complexity doesn't – if they do pick up a Hag, they usually run it on Haxorin, uh in the short lane. But, of course, he's playing the Silhouette this time around. So. Yeah. Interesting there, too, but uh, nonetheless has a great potential. And of course, Moomiator plays a great Tempest, and I'm sure Riser a great Hag as well. So, Yeah. Uh, I know a lot of people used to think that Master Arms isn't the greatest carry, but how he's being framed right now with you know the very gank-heavy lineups, a lot of early bursts, a lot of early <laughs> aggression, I mean, I think he fits in perfectly. Uh, I also, Nymphora Magnus, man, the, the, the power of those two line stuns combined can do so much work in team fights. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, now, laning phase, it might not be the best for them, especially with Rally here. Obviously, with that Compel, if anything, he can uh, support Aluna yes. with a Compel. And um, I'm curious, once again, to see how BK kind of builds here, if it is going to be that demoralizing. Actually, wow, he starts off with level 1 battle experience. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, helping him with the last hitting there. Yeah. Well, part of the, he's against the Pebbles here. He probably yeah. feels like it'll help him contest a bit, so. Okay. Doesn't mean he's going to max it out by any means, but uh, just hoping him for the last hitting early on. So we'll keep a close eye on the middle lane, of course. Uh, if, if there is going to be action, you expect it to possibly be in there. The Suicide Keizu, though, or <laughs> Suicide Magnus more so, being played by Keizu, uh, he did get pulled some reach in with the health potion, as you see. Um, and again, he, he probably won't have the best time up here. He does go the level 1 in Volcanic Touch. Um, and, but obviously with Silhouette even being a ranged hero and it, have, heavily harassing him, as you would expect. So again, the name of the game for him is simply Stay Alive. And uh, try, try not to try not to get too much harassment and die in the end. But hopefully for his sake and for State Green again, he could have a good time. But this is something that they have been doing, so it's not like this is just randomly happening for them. This game, uh, he has practiced it many times lately. Yeah, and he's got a little bit of pulled region there. I mean, Magnus is fine, especially for the first few waves until Silhouette really begins to pick up. I mean, he'll see us just fine. Ooh, there was a little bit of initiation on him four right there, but Aluna just uh, wasn't ready to follow up. It looked like. Uh, mm -hmm. So Nymphora taking some harassment, but the health potion comes out and we'll be fine. By the way, noticing this too, the Legion, both couriers actually are still ground couriers. <laughs> no upgrades coming out just yet. What, what is your take on that, Emperor? What do you think about ground couriers not upgrading at level 1? Uh, if they're going to get it by the time they need the major item pickup, sure. I mean, obviously the only downside is, I think it's okay, honestly. The only downside is you can't scout at the start of the game. So mm -hmm. both teams played it sort of safe, though. 
uh, Hag, you know, she wasn't at risk of dying going to place that ward with her with her early blink, early flash of darkness, getting down there as soon as possible. So yeah, I, they they felt like they were safe. Uh, she had an excellent level one, uh, you know, first blood team as well, and they moved up there and moved up there as a team, and just didn't feel like they needed the scout, I guess. So rather would have the resources for the laning stage and the pulled regen. Yep. Uh, Aluna does have the invis room going all the way to the bottom lane, so they're going to try to set something on a, on a Master of Arms here. Wretched Act doesn't have full mana, doesn't have Sonar Scream just yet, by the way. Has that level 2 Bat Blast, the, or no, I always say that, the Haunt, however. Uh, Fork Lightning coming out from Master of Arms, but again, Slix is going to be the one you need to be careful right here. There's the Haunt applied, the power throw on top of the Aluna stun, and Slix realizing very quickly that he is dead, and Bloodlust kill coming out for Riser. Playing that Wretched Hag. Meanwhile, the top lane, actually, Kazu might be in a little bit of trouble. Has a Lava Surge. Will he be able to use it correctly here? He stuns Tempest with it as well as goes off to the side. And actually, it looks like he will be fine, at least for now. And yes, he will be fine in the end. So uh, the counter gank onto him is unsuccessful. And obviously working out ultimately a lot better for State Green there. Or, excuse me, for Complexity. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Uh, excellent gank setup. I see Franzi do that a lot. They have a lot of movement uh, as his mid-support hero. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so definitely a great setup there. And that, that's the power of Haunt, though, man. It can set up so many kills uh, early on. I'm curious to see. I think from here on out, he'll leave it at level 2 and just, you know, level up his sonar scream and go from there. Yeah. Uh, level four now. I, something I did notice uh, right before that game cap and Wretched Axe farm. You know, it was uh, it was he was being out farming, and he still isn't great farm as you can see. And actually taking a charge shot right here, fork lightning in the final auto attack. No, not enough. And Wretched Hack gonna health potion right there. Master of Arms showing a little bit of his burst potential though, even at this level uh, mm -hmm. on a Wretched Hack right there. However, so but that was close. Yeah, and he's inherently got pretty decent armor. Uh, He's able to trade auto attacks with Hag very well and apply the pressure due to the fact that he has a stun and Hag does not. So yeah, I was going to say, I mean, does it surprise you then that Master Arms is having the better time with Creep Farm? No, not really. No. Not at all. Uh, but, of course, the, the ward again, obviously, there to block the, the spawns from being pulled by any means. But not the biggest deal in the world for Master of Arms, especially in that one versus one matchup. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Keeper of the Forest coming in with a flank right here, perhaps. He doesn't have a DD. No, he's going to the Ancients. He's flanking actually. the Ancients, yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Double damage room, might as well take advantage of it. Get at least a couple of Ancient kills right here, so. Yeah. Hag's pretty low mana. I wonder if he gets level 3 minions here and actually pressures the tower. We'll have to see. I mean, Hag can't really. Oh, she actually just got her bottle. Uh, I misspoke a bit there, I guess, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he might choose to apply some pressure. You saw the middle lane once again. Pebbles this time gets initiated on, but he will survive. Force the use of regen, though. Uh, gonna use a health budget, and obviously he does have a bottle as well with two out of the three charges. Rally, by the way, he is not going the Demoralizing Roar. He is uh, going the 202 build here. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's leveling up the battle experience. Actually, needs to be careful right here. Stalagmite's coming out. The Zeal's unexpected on top of the Chuck. There's a Zeal's done, but just a little bit too late. It still oh. would have been very close, but. Oh, no, no. He, he was definitely dead you there. You think so? Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. That was level okay. 2 in for Zeal. Yeah, that's true. It was level yeah, 2. That, yeah. <laughs> well, he waited just a little bit too long. It's, it's true. Um, oh, well. The brothers ain't able to get a kill right there. Um, definitely very possible. And that was also good timing, too, because obviously Aluna wasn't there, and that, that's more than likely why they <laughs> decided to go in. So, um, I'm noticing the junglers, too. I mean, both junglers, Keeper of the Force against Tempest, are having some decent farm. 260, 267 gold per minute about between the two, so... Uh, Ring of Sorcery coming up from Moomiander here, as uh, as is for Keeper of the Forest, I'm sure. Top room going to try to be protected by Tempest. Magmus is also here, though. And actually, Tempest, yeah, he's the one that needs to be careful. Are we going to see Stalagmites? Yes, we are, but no. A good cutoff from Moomiander right there. He is level 6 as well. Now, Magmus won in trouble. He's going to ulti right there. Guarantee the kill. Deep the Master's Call will come out, but it just doesn't matter. Too much damage. Great lockdown. Again, the ultimates are there to be used, especially at this level. So good kill coming out from Complexity. Yeah, I was going to say Riser has to be careful on Hag, but now that he used that Master's Call, he used up a lot of his mana. He does not have both of his spells now uh, for a potential kill. Mm -hmm. So that actually hurts him a little bit down there as well. Ooh, you see right there. Of course, Hag doesn't have the Bat Blast. We've talked about that a lot. Right. But uh, still quite a threat himself now, as, although Health Bushing can be used by Master of Arms. So. Yeah, yeah, he's not going to get a kill there. But yeah, still they don't have the, the insta-kill potential for Hag now like they did. Uh, Unless he overextends, I mean, Chessie, he is moving into the area, and no. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually he is. I think maybe they're confident they can get it. Maybe with the right timed autos, uh, the root plus the stun actually might be enough. We'll have to see. Yeah, it's uh, offensive master's goal. Oh, I guess, yeah, that he just doesn't have enough mana for all that. Maybe, Ooh. But, um, uh, Chessie, Chessie going the uh, more Minutesy style keeper jungle build with only one point of the veil and actually leveling up the end mood. Hmm. So, yeah, a little bit I more like aggressive it. I like there it. from him. 
Um, so maybe that could also help with getting that gank if he eventually does for it. But actually, now it's just got a little bit more depth. You see what we see what Riser did right here. He was actually double. I don't. I'm doubting he bought them, of course. But Ward of Sight and Revelation placed down over here off to his side. So all of a sudden, it just became a lot more difficult to freely get a gank onto him um, uh, at this bottom lane. Yeah, there's there's two things I want to point out. Uh, right where you see Z Freaks Ward in the river, the Revelation Ward. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, bottom river right there. Uh, yeah. Uh, Frenzy actually almost every game he he wards for his his suicide hero around that mark around the time where the jungle hero might come in flank and gank behind the tower and push it. Yeah, uh, he always has a ward down able to scout out the ganks onto that the, the suicide hero. So he placed it down and Zephi very very perceptively. I don't even think he saw him place it. Mm. Uh, or yeah, no, I don't think he saw him place it even. But he actually you know put that ward of rub down and countered it as soon as possible. So mm -hmm. great job by him. Master of Arms will fall here at the bottom lane. Middle tower, of course, going down now. Again, he got a, it's, I can see where he was coming from. Slicks did use the offensive master's call on himself rather than the defensive master's call right there, and he did barely die. So I don't know about that decision. It didn't seem like the speed burst really helped him the most. Top tower will be killed, however, as well for complexity. So, of course, overall, working out for complexity. Middle secondary tower, though, is going to be pressure. Keeping the force, of course, leaving the way, spawning some more trees. Pebbles, Magnus, and Nymphora are here. And vulnerability coming out. Will Complexity look to fight this? Rally Aluna and Tempest right now are here, but Tempest is out of mana actually. So, not going to be too much news. He will get a set up though. In comes the Lumet Tower will fall. Put up on cost right here. Pebbles will end up falling. The Seismic Slam doing absolutely nothing from B Kid as the death already happened, but they do get a kill. But two tower kills at least for State Green. So, they, they got something out of that. Yeah, yeah. They did get something. It didn't hurt as bad as it could have, but obviously still very much in Complexity's favor. Mm -hmm. uh, they're playing really impressively this early game. Yeah, they, they are. And it actually, yeah, 4 nothing hero kills. Uh, definitely a stat that's standing out to me, too, you know, nine minutes into the game. So, State Green especially, usually no one has more of an aggressive team. And, hell, with a lineup, you got your Pebbles, your Master of Arms, your Magmas, and then Forest speaks aggression all over the place. But... Not able to get kills just yet for them, so. Yeah, and it goes to the laning phase a lot. I mean, Tempest outformed Keeper a little bit in the jungle. Uh, you saw Silhouette absolutely manhandle the Magnus up top. Once, you know, we said early levels, Magnus will get his far on levels 1 through 3, and then after then, uh, Haxtron just laid down the hurt and <laughs> controlled the lane very, very well. Nice bottom tower kill. So, Steve Green, they're not getting hero kills, but that is three tower kills now in their favor, yeah. so. Uh, definitely getting something three for one, and, and the gold lead is is very slight for complexity as a result of that. But the experience lead, that's the big thing. 4,300 experience lead here already in favor of complexity. And, of course, Silhouette's, uh, yeah, Haxren just been doing his own thing up here. He's going to deliver the, oh, no no mana too, but I assume he's going to be going for that Null Stone, of course, as we always see on Silhouette, and then uh, follow it up from there. But, yeah. As far as positives over here on the Legion side, Master of Arms, Slicks especially going his typical early Energizer build here. More than likely, he'll have that here shortly. Yeah, you know how I feel about that already. I don't know <laughs> how I feel about Energizer in general. Uh, yeah. <laughs> very Slicks, warm reception. Slicks can, uh, yeah, he's, he has some fun builds sometimes, that's for sure. Yeah, but he, he, he does usually stick to the Steam Boots Energizer on a lot of these edgy carries, so. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely works for him, so. Um... Magmus uh, does finish Steam Boots right there, actually, so that's good for Kezu. And, and you know, his farm, 260 gold per minute. Obviously, the tower kills helping a lot. Working out yeah, there. Pebbles, that's... trying to get the support key, but still ways off. Yeah, that, that, that gold from Magmus pretty much only existing as <laughs> the tower kills. I mean, look at Silva right now relative to Magmus. 28 and 8 versus 66 to 24. Mm -hmm. uh, creates a lot of disparity. Uh, yeah, go back and think about that rally kill that was missed in the middle, too. Hurt a little bit of the momentum that she might be able to put on early game, too. True. Very true, yeah. That uh, that would have been big. Not that Rally's going to... Oh, actually, an four TP up top here. Silhouette's going to need to be in. Careful. Pebbles coming in, of course. No portal, no portal key. Wow. As actually, Magnus also trying to come in, but runs into Tempest. And that might be the fault right here. Silhouette sees Pebbles coming in, and yes, she will fall back. So they're hoping Magnus could sneak in there as well. But Tempest, Moon Meander happened to be in the right spot at the right time. And spotted them coming in eventually save Silhouette and uh, will scare off State Green. So they do use that in 4 poor pretty much right away as soon as she hits level 6. Unfortunately, nothing come of it, coming of it just yet again, especially without the portal keys. It can be a little bit more difficult to get those Oh, games. definitely. Um, yeah, you know, just Hexer in too, while he was farming the creep waves, he's not getting lazy. Uh, he's still dancing back and forth, juking in between each last hit, even though he had no vision of any enemy heroes. He's just staying on his toes there, so mm -hmm. uh, pretty difficult to gank. Uh, well-played Silhouette. Yeah, and of course, Axerin knows what he's doing when it comes to that. 
uh, here for complexity. So, yeah, just keeping the heads up and uh, doing it just fine here. There's a rune bottled up on Pebbles, it looks like. He does have a double damage ring currently, so maybe he can make use of that. 1,600 plus gold saved up on Chessie here, playing the Keeper of the Forest. So, obviously, Red Booty still has that ring of sorcery. Very possible. Could be going for that uh, early portal key, actually, on himself, too. So on some team fight initiation. The Energizer will be finished now on Slicks on top of that. Um, do you like the early portal key on Keeper? I do, because look at their team and look at how much you know burst and how much aggression they're able to put out. Mm -hmm. I think when you're looking at the Magmas, looking at the Pebbles, I do like it a lot. Although, I, I see SG not go that route a lot. So, I mean, he's saving up the gold for it. I expect he will, especially yeah. with a team like this. But You're right, yeah. Jesse does tend to tend to go, you know, more of that uh, team fight build at the same time, that astrolabe and whatnot. Um, play to grief, so we'll see. What this he is a game where could definitely, especially against the Tempest, where you want to be able to, you know, position yourself. Oh, there it is. So we <laughs> talked about it, and sure enough, yeah. he agrees. He, he is going to go that you, route. You again. can't really screw up being more tanky. Yeah, uh, you can definitely do a bad blink or not be able to use your portal key sometimes. So true. Uh, just feeling like it's safer. And if you look, they went steam boots even on Magmas this game. They're trying to be tanky enough they can survive and cast their spells. Oh, Magmas actually going to come in on your rally. The eruption going to be channeled. Oh, oh but that come hell! <laughs> the follow up. On? Why did they not follow up? The chuck was just way what? too late. The hero pushes himself, guys. <laughs> Stun him, please. <laughs> Oh, that was embarrassing. I mean, I think they would be the first to admit. That's, I know, that's I bad. know. And you know what? They're, they're they are great players. Yeah. Nine times out of ten, <laughs> e even more than that, they wouldn't make that mistake. But uh, something isn't firing here. Like, yeah, that's twice now in this game. Yeah, they're just operating on a different measure of time, maybe. Hmm. Or they need to go take some drumming lessons, learn some rhythm or something. Cause that's <laughs> Oh, we do have a Keeper of the Force initiation, though. Root will hit uh, Luna as well as Rally, but Luna's a focus fire. She's going to be taking out. There's a Compel again from Rally. Uh, charge shot hitting him, but he's just too far away now. Silhouette's nearby as well. Regidek also here, but look at State Green. All five are here for them. The Keeper dogs are out once again, and they are now going to mass push this tower. Master of Arms, of course, putting down the goo. And I don't think Complexity is going to be able to stop this. This should be the fourth tower kill unless we see a deny maybe from Silhouette. No, not going to risk it. Down goes the tower, and that is, again, four tower kills to one already in favor of State Green. So they do actually overtake the goal lead right there as a result of that. But still, the experience lead is continuing to grow here for the Hellborn team. And, I mean, it is adding up. You got you got Tempest already level 11. You got nines on Hag and Rally, and then Silhouette also level 10. Obviously, you compare that across the board to the Legion side. Well, it's not comparable. And, again, that goes back to looking at those team stats. So, um, But, nonetheless, good push from State Green. And although they didn't get that middle kill in a rally, they do capitalize off to the bottom lane at least. Yeah, yeah. And as we said before, we see this a lot of SG where they just pick lineups that have very, very strong early to mid team fights. So, yeah, they are down in experience. But uh, when it comes to the Clash, I mean, all of their skill sets are very, very powerful, mm -hmm. synergize very well together. And even though they're down, they can still make something happen. Uh, meanwhile, complexity, if they're able to sort of draw out this mid-game phase long enough and not take too much damage throughout it, let the Hag get farmed up, let her get her health flower shrunk in ultimately, let yeah. the still like at his core, uh, I, I do see them eventually escaping with this game. Yeah, yeah, of course. You got the silhouette on top of the Wretched Hag, as uh, you're noting there. It's, that's the big deal here for the Hellborn team. Well, hell, you just got a great team fight too, so... Yeah, Complexity's lineup does seem to be that scarier lineup as the game progresses on, especially at this rate. I mean, it's it's one thing if, if SG had, you know, the goal lane and the massive experience of themselves, but... Yeah, or if it was equal, you, you would say actually equal, it's really yeah. scary for SG because of how strong their team fight looks right now. You could say, oh, it was yeah. an equal game, they're going to really take over or snowball during this portion, or try to. Mm -hmm. um, so Complexity, yeah, still anyone's game, but Complexity is definitely sitting at a comfortable spot for what they have to go up against. 16 plus minutes in right now. Again, this is just game number one here, and of course, at best out of three. Winner's bracket semifinals for cycle number six here in the Diamond Division. Top tower going to be pushed, though. Uh, and again, I don't know if complexity is. They are kind of sending over. If they have invulnerability here, maybe. There's the invulnerability. Port's coming in, so they want to make something happen here. Is that going to be? Yes, that's Rally coming in. The tower is going to eventually fall. No, a nice deny actually coming up from Rally at the last second. Great play by B Kid. He's going to be poor man. Put a key in, though. He needs to compel away. Oh, he compels forward. Magnus is on the tab. on the in the background. It will pull the pebbles on Pat on top of that. Pebbles will fall. Aluna's now falling back. A root coming out for Keeper of the Forest. Silhouette getting bursted out. Rally also falling. He will eventually go down. Haxer, though, standing his ground, putting an auto attack himself, but Stagrin supporting pretty damn well. The Energizer used right there. Tree grapple away from Silhouette. 
but is that going to be enough for the getaway? No man on Master of Arms, I believe it will, but actually Magmus now looking to chase back in, as well as keeping the force. There's the Lava Surge done. Aluna's going to go down. Wretched Act blanking away, and that's how the fight is going to end. Down. It only ended up being a two-for-one exchange, actually, in favor of State Green, but the tower was denied, so uh, State Green, though, they had a great response there in the end. Yeah, it looked like initially, uh, you know, Moon had a great hole in the beginning. Uh, you saw a good... Well, was, I'm not even sure if the Bat Blast was that great, actually. I don't I saw think it, it was, the, yeah. No, I think it only hit one or maybe another target, but they were both high life. Keeper managed to get some good veils off to, you know, let his low life teammates escape. I didn't think there was any follow-up uh, Dust Revelation coming out here from Hellborn, which might have helped him a lot, actually, there. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, otherwise, still, uh, they killed the Pebbles. Pebbles does have his PK, though. Um, overall, fairly even exchange. Yeah, if I'm say green in that case, you know, I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. Honestly, it's because it's as you said, you know, the portal key on pebbles, especially, and and uh, things are kind of, kind of starting to come in more and more together here for state green. The fact that sure the tower was denied, but now it's five to the six towers are killed on the outer part at least. Uh, so all they need is that last one up top. And in fact, uh, <laughs> there are some minions there even, um, but they of course are going to eventually die off right here. But yeah, speaking of tempest, by the way, he actually buys a bound die himself. Or I'm guessing he bought that. I don't think he picked it up there. Uh, from the Legion team, so uh, yeah, Bound uh, I picked up here. It's bought, it's bought by by himself, I think. Actually. Yeah, it looks like. And it, he yeah. went the Striders route, so just going just very core essential items for what he needs. He's not getting too much fluff. He's just like, you know what, <laughs> the Striders and move around the map, get the PK, get the map control down. I don't need anything else. I don't need yeah, you know, all the bells and whistles. So Bound I also picked up a Z Freak actually now for Stay Green playing that in Fora, so. Both teams will have that tool to use. Top lane, that, that's an illusion there, so never mind. Uh, Magmus doesn't have his portal key. Uh, he does have enough gold right as I say that, though, so we'll probably see him purchase it here in the very near future. Also okay. has a haste room bottled up for it about another minute, so maybe they can make something use of that. Could be pretty big. They keep our tanking up t uh, now, too, where he's, he really is difficult for them just to burst down at the start of the fight, almost yeah. guaranteeing that he's going to get his ulti off. And when you're looking at things like, you know, Magmus, PK, ulti, follow up. Uh, you know, the Pebbles follow up, uh, the, the Acid coming from Master of Arms, uh, pretty scary. Uh, another thing to note is now that Magmus has PK and Pebbles has PK, the, the power of Nymphora port is, even if she's not using it, it's there. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, you see them already setting up on bottom here for Hag. But yep, they're trying Riser to. Knows. Yeah, Riser is a good player. He knows something's up and not, not going to push up as a result. So Pebbles ready to go in, but... And as we're saying, Riser just basically hugging the tower, and even with the next creep wave spawn, he's kind of walking up now. He is going to go for this creep wave. We'll see. Pebbles is starting to run up here. Uh oh, Wretched Hag. Oh, she blinks away just in time right there. The offensive master's call even used on Pebbles. But Wretched Hag, good reactions from Riser. Again, just spider senses were tingling. Uh, ooh, top lane though, we might have some initiation action for the Hellborn team. There's only three players here for Stigrin right now, and then can TP. In fact, she is going to TP up top right here, so this could be a big pay. Magma's going to send the team back. Here comes Pebbles, Selawak going to get burst down. That was actually a much better bat blast that time. It will kill Magmus right there, but the rest of the team is going to fall back in, especially with Silhouette dead. They possibly don't want to fight anymore. This top tower though, it is it could very likely fall now as a result of that from State Green, so... Very cra crafty play there, really, for both teams, but definitely working out for Stay Green again with an M4 port of Pebbles. Caught them off guard right, there, so. Right. Uh, Root winded up only hitting Silhouette as well. I'm not even sure if it was necessary for guaranteeing the kill on him, but I, I know it does. I forget, actually. Does it stop the swap out or not? Uh, do we ever. Uh, I'm pretty sure it does. Yeah. Well, either way, uh, Keeper of the Forest Root was used. It only hit the Silhouette. Tempest just barely began to. Yeah. That was yeah. a much better bat blast, like I said, that time around, but still. Um, I think the SG could be happy with the end result. The kill silhouette, they got the last tower kill. Again, the outer portion at least, so all that's left now is the base. And uh, pick up a next tier of items, and they can start pushing that even. And, and speaking of the next tier, you know, barrier idol on Keeper of the Forest. That'll be huge. Shrunken Head, of course, finished on Master of Arms here. Uh, you do have Pebbles, uh, another 2100 gold saved up, actually, so possibly a Soul's Bulwark on him. Uh, would be very good, of course, for the Legion team. So that's what's standing out right now for their side. Um, as far as the Hellborn team, and you actually look at Rally, uh, very possible going to Shaman's headdress to finish his cell, so maybe a barrier going to come up for him as he's sitting on the helm of the Black Legion. Arcana, only one Arcana so far in Hack. She does have about 2,200 more gold saved up, and the Nullstone's still not finished yet on Silhouette, actually. Hacksman's farm, it, it's still solid, 322, but it has definitely been slowing down here quite a bit. By uh, by Steve Green action. Actually, the gold per minute yeah. charts really do reflect it overall. 
And then also it's not going to be what helps him survive in these team fights. It's, a, it's more of like a synergistic item for, for later on, helps him farm up, things like that. But if you look at a lot of the damage output that him for the Magmus, the Pebbles, uh, you know, the, the Keeper route, none of these things are really affected by the Null Stones. When they're going for this, uh, you know, this mid-game heavy push and trying to win these fights, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that huge of a pickup, actually, looking at it. So True. Yeah, that is that is more of the, of the farming tool in that sense. And actually, we're going to be a little bit careful right here. The Illusion is up, so he has that to port to. But if Pebbles, even if he gets an offensive Master's Call here, he does have a Soul's Bulwark. Oh, we do see the port out there from Silhouette. And she'll be fine, so... Again, playing the very safest hacks, understandably. Does have the Null Stone purchase, but as you were saying, you know, is that necessarily the tool that you're really looking for for team fights? Not really. Uh, but hopefully, you know, now it can get towards. I don't know. What what would you like to see now? Do you think that Shrunken Head needs to be a priority, or is a Portal Key still good for her? Uh, Portal Key's always gun silhouettes for mobility, helps her split push further, helps her initiate in fights better. Yeah. Uh, not, never a bad pickup, but I mean, it, it, if not, then immediately afterwards, yeah, she should get her shrunken. I mean, just look at the Legion team. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, that. Speaks for itself. Yeah. yeah. Definitely agree with you there. So, Keeper the Fours, I love that right there uh, from Chessie. He actually used one of his tree dogs to prevent the stack uh, of the Ancients over here once again. That's it, annoying. We see that, yeah, every once in a while, just really small things like that. But, it, yeah, as a player, in this case on Complexity, that really has to be annoying. But Small, but it's like a... Uh... I don't know, how, how would you put it? It's like an anti-alchemist bones or something, where it's just like denying 300 gold from the enemy team yeah. every uh, minute. Every so minute, yep. <laughs> it's, it's, it adds really up. not that it's, it's substantial. It's yeah. Master of Arms actually has a uh, ooh, has a Warhammer picked up. Now we usually see uh, Master or uh, or Slicks go for more of the geometer spin, if I'm not mistaken, route. Uh, sometimes a null fire, but. Possibly not going that either. I, well, either Shield Breaker or uh, or even a Thunderclaw. Maybe he's going a Thunderclaw route this time. Uh, maybe I've historically seen him do more of the Shield Breaker route, but that's also when I've seen that a lot of times he's been partnered with the Deadwood, who is going the Bulwark. Uh, yeah, does have the Rotten Grass Mice armor as well. So maybe we'll see something different. I uh, can't really say. I would not be surprised at all to see the Shield Breaker pick up though. I'll that's say true. That yeah. yeah, yeah. Now that I think about it too, yeah, Shield Breaker. We've definitely seen seen on him before. Um, but we do know that, that although he's never really gotten that we've seen at the Thunderclaw Charged Hammer, we know that it yeah, can work. Knox and uh, Lion, I believe, or mm -hmm. some other team. So. Uh, Barrier Idol going to be used right here. A push in the middle lane coming out from State Green. Already breaking into the tower. About 24 and a half minutes in right now. So a fairly early on base push, but uh, not really committing to it by any means of State Green. Just put, applying some pressure, getting complexity to react, and uh, they're, they're fine just falling back. And, of course, going to continue to farm up for now. Hellflower finished on Wretched Ag, by the way. So, clearly, uh, another important pickup in this game right now. As Riser will be able to make great use of that, as always, on a Wretched Hag. So. Yeah, Tempest Wall on his way to Shrunken Head as well. I think, like, right now, I'd like to see overall SG, uh, you know, force and try to win team fights before uh, Riser is able to pick up his Shrunken Head later on. It's still a long ways off. He just got his Hellflower, so mm -hmm. they've got time. But I feel like that's sort of their window. Once he gets Shrunken Head on Hag and... Eventually, there'll be a shrunken head coming out on on the, the silhouette. I think that at that point, it's going to be a lot harder yeah. for SG to prevail in these fights. Yeah. That uh, so that kind of that key mark right there. Stay green though. Again, they, they they most certainly have been keeping this aggression up. So I find it hard to believe that they're just going to transition into a very farm heavy game now. So um, they are just kind of stealing the stealing the jungle even here from from complexity. But look at complexity. They're pushing their first tower here at the bottom lane. So finally, going to take care of that. Uh, in this game right now, that's their second overall tower kill, it looks like. But State Green immediately pushing back out the middle lane and going to start pressuring the base right here. So they're going to get Complexity to fall back. Even Barrier Idol once again going to be used. They may actually get the tower kill. It's uh, The port's not the fastest and vulnerability, I don't. I think it was already used. So I don't believe Complexity has that for now. Um, they are going to lose the tower kill, it looks like. Tempest is ready to go in. Okay, they do have invulnerability, so never mind. The tower will stay up at least for a little bit longer. That's barely, barely dead though. Okay, they're just going to kill it right there. Slicks gets credit as uh, no one really jumping in though. Yeah, and Riser continued. He, he was actually told he did not warp back right away. They weren't trying to fight that. They were just going to let it fall. And, you know, he kept his farm up in the enemy jungle. So, mm -hmm. yeah, doing a good job there. Uh, one thing I will say about SG is I, I feel like they, they, they have been outplayed a little bit by Complexity this game when it came to the laning phase, and I, I think Complexity is definitely looking revived as a team, uh, showing that they still have what it takes to compete. But SG is very good at recognizing uh, 
their lineup's uh, window of opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, usually if they have lines that they know they can't contend with later, they will push and they will push and they will push and they will push. Even 10k down, they'll, they'll keep going yeah. knowing that that is their chance. So yep. uh, they're very good about applying the pressure. They're not sitting there waiting for, oh, I need to get this or need to get that. Those like, we need to go now. This is like when we're strongest relative to the enemy team mm -hmm. and let's go for it. So. That's what we see here once again here from State Green. So yeah, definitely right. Um, Shield Breaker was the item of choice here for for Master of Arms, who right now is level two. No, it's still level one. He has a double damage room bottled up, by the way, too. So may possibly use that going into a big team fight. That could happen here. Charge shot on a rally right there, but no further initiation. He's still sitting on that Shaman's address. He has enough for a barrier idol, actually, but uh, yeah. not going to get it at least just yet. As uh, once again, Legion team resetting. May, may look to push in again. Barrier idol is on cooldown here, but. Yeah, Luna has to be very careful because what SG likes to do here is just sit back, let for Pebbles to look to see if he can play well. Oh. oh, there we go. Rally actually jumping in. Yeah, first himself, but oh my god, Rally will explode in the end. Just so much return damage coming out on him. Ballantyne also going to be picked up right there by Pebbles. And yeah, so uh, Complexity tried to be the aggressors right there a little bit, and that clearly did not work out whatsoever as he got oh. massive returned on, so... <laughs> He does a buyback, but here's that double damage rune on Master of Arms. In fact, he will buy back right there, but look at State Green immediately falling back themselves. Although it's a little bit of a fake fallback. They're not really going all the way. Maybe trying to bait out Complexity, but Complexity's not having any of that. So that that, that worked out, again, very well for State Green in the end. Yeah, uh, th having to go up against that Master's call. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pre pretty annoying. Um, yeah, I guess he just went in, and his team was like, oh, we don't have the positioning we wanted. If we do this, we're going to get wrecked, and it was sort of a waste. <laughs> yeah. The, because yeah, he actually could have had a barrier or some pickup, whatever he's opting to go for next. Uh, right now, I was, I was going to say, Aluna has to be careful. When, when SG's sieging a lot, they look for well, someone. Well, she's done some... right here. <laughs> oh, maybe not, actually. She is going to get compelled away, so I guess she will be fine. But uh, yeah, go, go ahead, sorry, though. Yeah, they don't have Aluna, obviously, to assist with the damage, but they, they look for a target they can just pick off and play whack-a-mole with with Pebbles right away. Yeah. And then the other, the, his, their SG team will not overcommit. They'll all sit back and let the Pebbles go. And if they choose to counter-initiate and use their spells on uh, on Pebbles, that's their sign. Like, okay, they're using all their stuns, all their cooldowns on, cooldowns on Pebbles. Now we'll jump in mm -hmm. and we'll counter-fight them. But usually the enemy team's too hesitant to do that. They know it's not wise, and Pebbles just, like, walks right on out afterwards. And then they'll siege the base, uh, you know, 5v4. So they just have to be really careful on their positioning with the heroes that can sort of be one shot there. Yeah, yeah, we definitely see that a lot here from State Green. So Silhouette being, uh, you know, taking advantage of a course her illusion, pushing the bottom blade a little bit, but she now is going to fall back. And actually, she does purchase a portal key right there. She did pick up the mighty blade first for a little bit more survivability, and eventually the shrunken head. But it does want that mobility that we stressed, and we see a lot, of course, on Silhouette. So. Uh, has that blinking potential herself. Rally in the front lines again, but we did see he, even he could be bursted down pretty quickly. So need to be a little bit careful there about getting initiated on. But for the most part, all the ultimates are up. Granted, Silhouette's Illusion isn't up, and that, that can definitely be a big deal if she happens to get caught out. So Our Shadow is huge, yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's that's what allows Silhouette to be Silhouette. I mean, the hero is all based on mobility. That's why, you know, with a PK, it's just, it just expands upon her strengths. That's why it's such a strong pickup on her. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and when that shadow's down, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, level three shield breaker finished on Master of Arms. So again, his damage up, but definitely next. My save rally going to be jumping right. He's going to be checking into, into the team, and rally will fall once again. Oh, what a big damage on the middle. Bad on top. Silhouette setting on top as well with the death lotus. He's going to throw out the nukes. Then four off to the side with the seals done. Tap is now falling. Eruption going to be channeled. And look at the return from Stay Green though. Silhouette. He will eventually fall. Wretched Egg and Aluna up in the hill still. But holy crap, Stay Green. Selma holding, look at that, Nymphora TPs in Pebbles after the buyback, and they are going to go full force here now. They finish off the melee racks, the ranged racks, I don't know if they're going to finish that off. Pebbles is still here, but the rest of the team working towards top. Tempest, Silhouette, and Rally all dead, and they ain't buying back. So this could possibly be two sets of racks, actually. Yeah, no, I actually, as far as I can tell, definitely. <laughs> Nothing really hack can do. Her bat blast is down, man. The, the combos are up. It's... You know, PK on Mag, PK on Pebbles, that she can't even get near, so. Yeah. What do you, what do you... Oh, <laughs> just buying time, buy. No, no, this is, yeah. it was tactical. It, it was just trying to buy time. But, That's yeah, tactical. They, the suicide into concede. Or there. <laughs> or there's yeah. that. Yeah, no, I get where you're coming from, I'll but yeah. I'll give benefit of the doubt. Like, <laughs> if, if he was to be doing this at, yeah. for one, you know, anyway. 
Hey, even a, sec a second can in a game like that, it can matter. But yeah, that was clearly a case of, all right, we lost, we're frustrated, let's just uh, give up and move on to game number two. That last fight, though, again, Rally. This is Rally. He had a Helm of the Black Legion. He had a Shaman's Headdress. He, he plenty of life, a strength hero. He was getting jumped and bursted down right there by State Green. Now, we did see complexity, a huge Tempest ultimate from Umiander. They got a great bat blast off. Silhouette was able to do her damage. You got to figure, though, if Rally was there, <laughs> obviously with his seismic slam, even the compel, how much different that fight could have been, but yeah, clearly. When, when Rally first came out, the instant hero that everyone's like, oh, Rally's so good at Tempest, Rally's so good at Tempest, Rally's so good at Tempest, and uh, you know, for obvious reasons, people like to see that combo, but just not able to get it off, and mm -hmm. that's how it is. Well, again, that's State Green. Uh, that's where you got to give them the credit. Like you said, they play that footsie game. They, they, whether it's a Luna, whether it's Rally, they'll go in there. They'll pick off the hero. They'll kind of reset things. And again, a great reaction from Complexity for the most part with the resources that they had at that time. But uh, in the end, State Green taking the first game, and that means, of course, they're up one game to nothing now over Complexity. So uh, congratulations to them. But it is a best out of three. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a short break here, as always. We will have game number two, though, coming back at you. Complexity, stay green, winner's bracket semifinals, cycle number six, Diamond Division. Stay tuned. Next game coming up. <laughs> 